In this video, we will be disassembling, cleaning, and installing a composite video mod to this Atari 2600 console. Please note that all connections for this modification will be located internally opposed to drilling holes in the back of the case. Let's take a look at some of the tools that we use for this project. Starting out with the solder, I use this MG Chemicals No Clean, uh, just a basic electronic solder if you need the information, there it is. The Flux, also MG Chemicals. This is uh, really a must have when you're doing these projects. It really aids in the solder flowing and cleaning off the surface that you're working on. So definitely need that. And then the rest is just really basic stuff. Some scissors, some cutters, needle nose pliers, wire strippers, iFixit toolkit, soldering iron, and then just a few chemicals, some 99% IPA, Windex, electronic cleaner, and Q-tips. So that's what we'll be using to do this project today. Overall, the console is not in terrible condition. It is dirty, dusty, and could use a good cleaning, so let's start taking this thing apart. We'll start by removing the four Phillips head screws located on the bottom of the console. Next, we'll be able to pop the lid from the base and then reach inside and slightly tip the circuit board in order to release the lid. Next, we will unplug the RF jack from the board and then fish the cable from the base of the unit. Because we are composite modding this console, the RF cable is no longer needed and can be discarded. The board itself appears to be in good condition. As seen here, this unit was manufactured June 18th of 1982. We'll remove these four switch dust covers and set them aside to reinstall later. This foil tape, which I believe is part of the RF shield, can be removed and discarded. The top and bottom tin RF shield can also be removed. To do this, we will use a small pair of needle nose pliers straightening out each of the four tabs and then lifting the shield away from the board. Now we will use Q-tips and Windex to clean any dirt and debris from within the cartridge slot. Before washing the case, we need to remove the switch bezel. To do this, you'll use a small flathead screwdriver to depress three of the six tabs on the back side of the bezel. The console is now completely disassembled and our focus can shift to the board modification. It's also a good idea to clean all of the switches with an electronic cleaner. In our first step, we'll need to go ahead and remove this small audio transistor. We'll use snips to cleanly cut all three legs, ensuring that they are not touching one another or any other components on the board. This is a tight spot for the snips. Just use caution to not damage any of the other components. Once removed from the board, this piece can be discarded. 
Moving on, it is now time to remove some of the stock Atari video circuitry. These five legs will need to be clipped and then desoldered from the board. To make desoldering easier, it's best to clip these legs just before the 90 degree bend. If you cut them too short, it makes removal difficult. Now using a pair of larger needle nose pliers, we'll twist and break free this portion of the circuit board. Flipping the board over, we will now need to begin the process of cleaning the solder and removing the five pins that we just clipped. Here I'll add flux to the area which we will be working in to assist with solder removal. It's important to use caution and be patient. If you don't allow the solder to melt before pulling on the pin, it's easy to remove the pad from the circuit board. If this happens, you won't have anywhere to solder to attach the new wiring. When looking at the pins from the top of the board, starting from left to right, we will be using numbers 1, 3, and 4, so it's a good idea to start with 2 and 5 in case this happens. So when you order these kits to composite mod on an Atari 2600, you can get them like this, where it's, everything is already done for you, or you can get a kit where you have to solder on these individual pieces yourself. Normally that's the way I go, these were the only ones that were available this time. So for the video, this is what we're going to use. Alright, and then this side of the board you can see is in, so this is the side that we're going to solder onto the board. So we're going to go ahead and get these wires stripped back. I'm going to go ahead and strip back about a quarter inch of insulation from all four of these wires. As previously mentioned, we're going to solder these wires to the pads from the pin number 1, 3, and 4. It's important to note that wire color could vary depending on the kit purchased. In this example, the black wire is our ground, the red wire is our 5 volt, and the green is video. White is audio and will be addressed shortly. I'm now clipping off any excess wire and will add solder to the bottom side of the board for added strength. Next, we will solder the white wire, which will provide us our audio in signal. The first time I performed this modification, I found this to be one of the most challenging parts as there are many board variations in different layouts. You will need to find this row of resistors, counting from right to left, and we are going to solder to the fourth pad. It's important to note that the third and fourth pad do connect, which makes this task far easier. As you've seen, with any of the soldering that I've done in this video, it's always important to start with flux. From there, I'm using a set of helping hands to hold the wire in place while I apply heat and then solder. Now it's time to attach the video and audio wires to the female connectors. The yellow video connector will receive our video out wire as well as the ground. The audio out wire will connect to both the red and white female connectors. Lastly, I'm connecting the black ground wire to all three of the connector ears. We'll go ahead and connect both our video and audio cables to the connectors. Because I've chosen not to drill holes in the case and mount each of these connectors externally, I'll go ahead and use electrical tape to insulate each of them. The new cables can be fed through the port previously used for the RF connection.
Luckily, there is plenty of spare room within the case to neatly route the wires and store the excess. Now we can reinsert the switch bezel and click it back into place as well as install the four switch dust covers. Here I'll secure the mod board to the case via the 3M double sided tape provided with the kit. Before final reassembly you'll need to adjust the color palette via the pot located on the circuit board. This can be done using a small flathead screwdriver. Here I'm using Frogger to adjust the colors to where they should be. Now that the modification is complete, we can reassemble the case. Again, it is necessary to angle the circuit board in order to reattach the lid. Note that the four case screws are of different length. The shorter screws go in the back of the case and the longer in the front. I've modified a few of these consoles now and I much prefer the appearance of the internally mounted jacks opposed to drilling holes in the case. If you enjoyed watching this project please check out my channel as I have many other videos with similar content.